For Our Soil's Sake is brought to you by Holistic Management Canada. My hope is to feed our souls by having meaningful conversations with farmers, producers, and experts in agriculture to get a greater understanding of management practices that mitigate climate change, improve water quality, build soil health, and enhance habitat and biodiversity on agricultural landscapes. To give those of us who live in the city a better understanding of how what we consume directly affects our health and the health of the land. My name is Bronwyn Green, and I'll be your host. So for our soil's sake, let's dig right in. Hey everyone, my name is Bronwyn Green, and I'm the host and producer behind the podcast For Our Soil's Sake. I want to do this interview so that I could introduce myself to everybody, tell you a little bit about my background, why I'm doing the podcast, as well as introduce you to the organization that I work for, which is Holistic Management Canada. They are the ones who are funding this project, so thank you so much. And I also wanted this to be a little introduction to the eight episode series I will be releasing shortly where I interview farmers who were involved in one of our programs last year. The program is the Regenerative Accelerator Program and I will get into that shortly. So let's dig right in. My little intro about myself. So I actually don't come from a farming background. I grew up here in Winnipeg, Manitoba in the city and I spent an enormous amount of time outside and absolutely love it and have always had a passion for caring about the environment and protecting it as much as I can. I have been recycling and composting and buying sustainably sourced products for a while, uh, hoping that that would have a positive impact on our climate crisis. As well, I was vegan for a number of years because I believe strongly that conventional mass production of meat uh, through feedlots and things like that were one of the biggest negative contributors to the environment. Mm -hmm. And I still do believe that. but I am not vegan anymore, and my perspective of things have changed a little bit. Uh, it kind of started when my friend let me the book Kiss the Ground, and I have that here, so I'll show it to you guys. Kiss the Ground. Um, there's a documentary of it, too, if you want to check that out. It's a really great read. There's a little bit more information in the book If you're into reading, I would suggest that. And that really changed my perspective of how it's not the animals and the production of meat that is necessarily the negative part on our environment and land. It's how we manage that. And so um, it talked about how having animals on land is an integral part of the health and ecology of the environment. And it's essential. And basically the history of herding animals throughout decades um, and thousands of years and how that was what helped sustain the landscape that we see now and how by removing those animals from the land, um, it has only deteriorated and led to the desertification of our world and the soils or sorry, the desertification of the land and destroying the soil that we grow our food from. And so that led me down a rabbit hole of research about regenerative agriculture. And so regenerative agriculture, just to give a quick little definition, is the idea to produce food while uh, enhancing the soil life, um, which in turn will produce healthier crops, Um, and ultimately decrease uh, the need for inputs and lower production costs. And so there are principles towards uh, regenerative agriculture, and I would love to talk about these for hours because I love the topic and I think it's super important, Um, but we're just going to stay on topic this time and hopefully in episodes to follow, I will be interviewing leaders in regenerative agriculture to give everybody a better understanding of how this all works. 
but just to provide you with some resources that help me. So after reading Kiss the Ground, my next favorite book is Dirt to Soil by Gabe Brown. And he's kind of like my farming hero and maybe some other farmers out there would feel the same. Um, this is pretty much his journey from conventional farming uh, to regenerative farming and uh, really stresses the idea that the, the health of the soil really determines the health of the crops, the plant, the food, and that determines our health. And so I, uh, besides just spending time outside enjoying myself, I've also gardened for a number of years and I drive a great deal of pleasure from growing my own food and supporting my family and friends that way. And understanding that the health of your food depends on the soil in which you grow it is really important and how do we um, support that that those living organisms in the soil so that it is healthy and it's soil and not dirt um, will we really quantify the health of the food that comes from it and in turn the health of us and um, my health is very important to me as well as the health of my family and friends and I truly believe that a lot of the mental and physical ailments that we suffer from in society today stem from a lack of uh, nutritious food and there are a lot of other factors that play into that of course but I believe that if we can start uh, with agriculture and how we manage and farm um, and how that can improve the life of the soil and the health of the soil, that will uh, improve our crops and our food and that will improve our health. And so that's very important to me. Um, Another book that I read, which is a little bit controversial, uh, but that's The Vegetarian Myth by Lierre Keith. Um, and so I read this because I had been doing so much studying about how important animals are in the natural world and how important animals are in agriculture and restoring landscapes and grasslands. Um, but I still struggled with the idea of eating meat. And so I have a lot of friends and family that are plant-based, vegan. Um, my mom and my brother are still plant-based and I support their decision not to eat animals. Uh, however, I have changed my mind about being vegan um, because majority of the research that I've done about um, farming and things like that and how uh, animal production uh, can be done a lot differently and kind of understanding that there is a cycle of life um, and we are a part of it. We're not removed from it and how um, we can benefit from the nutrients that come from these animals as well as uh, the benefits that they provide to the land. And so that's a great book that I like. Um, another one would be Diana Rogers' uh, Sacred Cow, which I have in electronic file. So I can't show that to you, but I'll put the, the description, I'll put the title of all these books in the description of the video. Um, and my other favorite one is Nicole Masters for the Love of Soil, which again is on my computer, so I can't show it to you. But it's a great read, uh, and I would suggest all those books. So Reading all this information and changing the way I garden a little bit was the first step. So removing all synthetic chemicals to my garden was key. Um, composting more was really important to me. And from there, I kind of just felt like it was my responsibility and duty to be more involved in agriculture in that sector because I'm so passionate about it. And I believe that it's important um, for me to take uh, a proactive role in the climate crisis and trying to improve the environment that we all live in. So I don't have anybody who farmed in my life and I didn't know anybody who farmed and I honestly didn't know if I could mentally or physically hack the farm life. And so even though I had in theory all these great ideas about being involved in regenerative farming and making a difference, I didn't even know if I could do it. And so I went online and started researching job opportunities in agriculture and I came across the organization Young Agrarians 
which is a fantastic organization. Please check them out. I'm going to put a link in the description so you can, um, but they're pretty much an organization that helps first generation farmers find uh, job opportunities in the agriculture sector. They help uh, create a community for like-minded people uh, who care about food and land management so that um, they have like events that you can gather and meet people and learning opportunities. They have a land matching program in the West Coast where they find people who have land uh, but don't have time resources or they aren't able to farm but they have land, access to land, and match them with people who want to farm but don't have access to land. As well, they have like a business boot camp where they can help you write a business plan uh, to get your farm operation started. So at the time... Uh, this was all going down. They were offering an apprenticeship program and they're offering it again this year and hopefully they'll continue offering it. But it is a program where they match you with a mentor farm where you go and apprentice there, you work and you live with them for anywhere from four to 12 months and you learn all about farming, everything that you can. Then there's different types of farms that you can go to and that's kind of goes with the matching process. Uh, process of you saying kind of what you're looking for. Uh, the farmers who are mentoring uh, let Young Agrarian know the type of uh, people that they're looking to apprentice or they're looking to mentor. And then that match is made. And so I went to a farm just south of Russell, Manitoba called Grip Fast Farm. And my mentors were Doug and Carol Turnbull. They have a mixed livestock operation. And this was one of the most life-changing experiences that I ever had. So I lived there for five months. I worked, slept, ate with them every day. I did come home a few times, but um, I learned how to put all the knowledge that I learned about regenerative farming into uh, real life <laughs> um, and into actual practical skills. And so I learned how to um, manage my time in a family and a business that operates on land. I learned how to take care of and manage animals, how to grow crops and monitor those crops, uh, species identification of grasses and plants, animals and insects. It was incredible. Um, I had an amazing time and it really, really made me realize that this was the place for me and I do hope to farm in the future. I'm still currently living in Winnipeg right now working for Holistic Management Canada, but the goal is to um, start farming in the near future. So one of the things that I did with Doug uh, and Carol was I used this app called Soil Mentor and it's being piloted by Nicole Masters where it is a series of experiments that you do in each of your pastures to monitor the ecological health. And so these experiments range from looking at the soil texture and structure and smell to insect activity um, and water infiltration tests. And so that test is pretty much to see if your land and soil is absorbing rainfall um, effectively. And so is the water being able to infiltrate into the soil so that it can be stored there um, and kind of create this reservoir to grow plants in the future and it's very key for drought resiliency and so as part of young agrarian program the apprenticeship program you have the other apprentices come to your farm at the end of the year and you show them kind of what you're doing and so we did the tour on my land or on their on, my, on the farm that i was apprenticing on and i showed them everything and then at the end i conducted these experiments for the group and so one of the person that was one of the persons that was on the tour is my now current boss and uh, Dana, and she is uh, works for Young Agrarians as well as Lessig Management Canada, and she's the neighbor of Doug and Carol. And so she came, she saw me do these experiments. After my tour, she pulled me aside and said, hey, I'm working on this project where we are monitoring health across farms in Manitoba. Do you wanna come do this with me? And I jumped on that opportunity very quickly. And that fall, we ended up monitoring five farms, Manitoba, 
where we did a series of um, different experiments through a whole mythology that was developed through the Savory Institute. And so this mythology is called EOV, Ecological Outcome Verification. And the Savory Institute uh, developed this out of uh, uh, Boulder, Colorado. That's where they, they run out of. And it is a methodology to look at health indicators on the land, look for short-term and long-term indicators that quantify that your land is regenerating and not degrading. And so we did this for five farms that year. The following year, I was hired full time with Holistic Management Canada, where we did another 10 farms. And then this year we're doing 12 farms. And so the series of interviews that I'm going to be releasing in the next few weeks are going to be interviews from those 10 farms we did last year in their involvement in that project. And so that's pretty much how, where I got from where I started. So started off gardening, living in the city, to apprenticing on a farm, to uh, working with holistic management part-time, to now full-time working with them and being their program coordinator um, up till today. And so just to give you a little bit of information on the Regenerative Accelerator program, it's exactly what the title says. We aim to speed up, accelerate regenerative practices here in Manitoba. And so that's made possible through the Manitoba Heritage Habitat Corporation Conservation Trust. And they give us money so that we can pay for the farmers who are involved to have uh, some consulting done with educators from our, from our organization. Um, and then we also give them money so that they can implement a project on their land and we give them that ecological outcome verification monitoring so we provide them with some data and a baseline to where their land is uh, on a health level so that they can adjust their management practices for the following year um, and if they're involved in this program year after year having this monitoring done they're able to qualify for a land to market certification. And that is a certification that the Savory Institute has developed that um, you can put on the products that come from your farm, like a stamp um, that pretty much lets consumers know that the products that are coming from this land are coming from a regenerative place. They're not degrading the land. So that is the Regenerative Accelerator program, and you're going to hear a lot more about it in episodes to come. Just another little tidbit about Holistic Management Canada, and pretty much what we do is we empower farmers to make ecological, economical, and socially sound decisions for their farms and communities. And so... We help them create financial plans, grazing plans, a context for their farm so that they can have the quality of life that they desire, desire, but also be a viable business and as well make ecological, um, socially sound management decisions. And so we operate out of the Savory Institute. The Savory Institute, like I said, is in uh, Colorado, and they have hubs all over the world um, that are doing this. And we're the Canadian hub of that institute. And so it, in like very brief words, uh, the Savory Institute aims their mission is to regenerate as much land across the world as they can um, by contributing to reversing desertification of grasslands and um, helping with the climate change and so we're one of those hubs um, and a lot of what we do at holistic management canada and a lot of what they do at the savory institute is education and so we're educating producers farmers ranchers business owners to make more ecological economical socially sound decisions when managing their business and the land uh, so that we can have a positive impact on the land and it can sustain generations to come. So that's pretty much all I have. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is kind of why I'm doing the podcast is that um, I have a lot of friends and family that live here in the city 
and there's a lot of information out there. And I wanted to provide um, a space where people from the city could learn more about regenerative agriculture, more about holistic management, more about how their food um, is grown and raised and what kind of impacts that has on the health of the environment and the health of themselves. And so I just want to bridge that gap between people who live in the city and people who are producing and growing food outside of the city. So lastly, if there is anybody who wants to know more about Holistic Management Canada, please check out our website at holisticmanagement.ca. We're also on social media, uh, Instagram and Facebook. And um, if you have any questions, concerns, feedback, or if you would like to discuss or you'd like me to discuss a topic um, on one of my next episodes, please feel free to reach out. Do not hesitate. I would love to hear from you. And I will provide a, a list of the uh, books and um, the Savory Institute Young Agrarians and Holistic Management in the description of this video. So check it out if you have time. Well, that is all for now. Thank you so much for listening for our soil's sake. To learn more about holistic management, regenerative farming principles, and the farms in Manitoba that are implementing these practices, check out our Instagram and Facebook page or visit our website at holisticmanagement.ca and make sure to sign up to our newsletter so we can let you know about all the upcoming events and learning opportunities in your area. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to discuss in the future on this podcast, please reach out. I'd love to hear from you. For our soil's sake, thanks for listening in everyone.